Good evening. My name is Josina Morita. I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District and proud to chair the Asian American Caucus and co-host this event with Representative Jennifer Gonkerschwitz. We're proud to have everybody here, uh, not just local elected leaders, faith and community organizations, neighbors, friends today, to stand up against anti-Asian hate and hate and violence in all of its forms. Three weeks ago, eight people were murdered in Atlanta. Six were Asian American women. This was not an isolated incident. We have seen anti-Asian hate crimes grow over the last year. According to Stop AAPI Hate, there were over 3,700 anti-Asian hate incident crimes reported across the country, 100 in Illinois just in the last year, and 69% have been targeted towards Asian American women. And we know that these numbers are underreported. I wish I could say that we were here just to talk about the Atlanta murders, but we continue to see a rise in anti-Asian hate crimes across the country and here in the Chicago area. Just in the last week, a 70-year-old Vietnamese man was punched in the face on Argyle. A Chinese couple was yelled at on, in Bunker Hill. An 83-year-old woman and her daughter were verbally assaulted at the Chicago Botanic Garden. And we have seen too many bystanders stay silent and, as we saw in New York, literally close the door on victims. We are here to stand together and to make a commitment to not be silent, but to speak up and show solidarity, not just here today, but at home, at our workplaces, out in the public, to ensure that everybody feels welcome, everybody feels safe, and everybody feels supported in our community. So thank you so much for joining us today. We will start with an opening prayer from Reverend Asayo Haribe with the Buddhist Council of the Midwest and Heartland Sangha. Can everyone stand and put your hands together? In the Buddhist community, we say this is Gasho. For everybody, it means you and I are one. Look to your right and look to your left. And you will say, I honor you and I respect you. If you've been vaccinated, that's wonderful. If you have not, please maintain your social distance, keep your masks on, and use hand sanitizer if necessary. May all beings be free. May all beings be free from pain and suffering. May all beings live with health and well-being. May all beings be happy. So I think we're really lucky here in Evanston and this area, I live in Skokie, to have so many strong leaders, organizations, and community members that are here to stand against hate and that work every day to ensure that this is a welcoming and inclusive community. I'd like to recognize them briefly. Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, State Senator Laura Fine, State Representative Robin Gable, State Senator Ron Billivalam, State Representative Denise Wang Stoneback, Cook County Commissioner Larry Sufferden, MWRD Commissioners Cam Davis, Deborah Shore, Mariana Sparopoulos, Mayor elect Daniel Biss, 
Alderman Peter Braithwaite, Cicely Fleming, Ann Rainey, Eleanor Ravel, Robin Bruce Simmons, Tom Sufferden, Committeeman Eamon Kelly, Cook County Commissioner Scott Britton, and our community organizations that helped host today's event, Second Baptist Church, Evanston North Shore NAACP, Evanston Unitarian Church, St. Matthew's Episcopal Church, Bethel AME Church, Bethany Baptist Church, Beth Emmett the Free Synagogue, Northminster Presbyterian Church, Democratic Party of Evanston, Organization for Positive Action and Leadership, Evanston Cradle to Career, and the Jewish United Fund. Thank you all for your support of today's event. I'm also proud that this event today is sponsored by the Asian American Caucus, which I chair. And it's amazing to think that just five years ago, five years ago, none of us were elected to the offices that we hold. Our progress, especially in this moment, is palpable. Representation and leadership matter, and we are so fortunate to be standing in a district represented by our first Asian American elected in the suburbs of Cook County, the only immigration lawyer in the General Assembly, and an outstanding representative, Jennifer Gongerschwitz. Thank you, Josina. Thank you to my colleagues, community leaders, partners, and most importantly, thank you to everyone who came out today in person and online to show solidarity with the Asian American community and to stand against hate in all of its forms. My name is Jennifer Gong Gershowitz, and like many, my name is a reflection of my American story. I am a Jewish woman, a Chinese American, a state representative, and a human rights attorney. I was raised to believe in the power of my own voice and the boundless potential for opportunity that was denied to my grandparents under racist policies codified in the Chinese Exclusion Acts. I am also someone whose family has suffered through a tragedy as a result of gun violence. Let us be very clear. The Atlanta shootings were a hate crime. It was not a random act of violence by a sex addict having a bad day, as some have dismissed it. The attacks targeting Asian spas across the Atlanta area were rooted in a deep history of xenophobia, racialized sexism, and the perpetuation of harmful stereotypes that have normalized and justified violence against Asian American women. As we gather as one community to remember the victims of anti-Asian violence and demand an end to the xenophobic, hate-fueled violence that has shaken us all to our core, we must acknowledge the intersection of race, misogyny, and an epidemic of gun violence in our country that has been an ever-present, pervasive threat to Asian American women for as long as I can remember. This is not an isolated incident. In 2020 alone, hate crimes against the Asian American community spiked by 150%. The murders of these women need to be seen in the context of racism in this country and the persisting fetishization of Asian American women that not only undermines our humanity, but our safety and our very lives. I woke up Tuesday morning to yet another story of anti-Asian violence. This time, a 65-year-old woman in New York City was knocked to the ground and then kicked repeatedly while bystanders did nothing to stop the attack. For the AAPI community, the shootings have amplified hundreds of years of exclusion, erasure, and, in and invisibility. Our history is American history. Racialized opinions about Asian American women have been woven into the legal code and American culture dating back to the New Page Act of 1875. Anti-Asian violence is nothing new, but we have seen a sharp rise 
since the outbreak of the pandemic and the scapegoating of Asian Americans by a former president who thrives on racism and gaslighting division. Words matter. What we say, what we don't say, what we teach in our classrooms, and just as significantly, what we don't teach. To that end, I have worked with AAPI organizations to introduce and sponsor the TEACH Act. It stands for Teaching Equitable Asian American Community History, TEACH. And it ensures that Asian American stories and experiences are included in American history curriculum. Our schools already teach American history, but have long ignored the stories and contributions of Asian Americans. This legislation is personal to me, and it is also necessary. I am the graduate of Illinois Public Schools. I first learned of the Chinese Exclusion Acts when I was studying in law school. My own family was subject to discrimination and deportation under the Chinese Exclusion Acts, yet the history courses I took didn't include anything that reflected my own family's history or the shared experiences of other Asian American families that are woven into the fabric of American history. Empathy comes from understanding. We simply cannot expect to do better unless we know better. And it starts with education. The only way to defeat ignorance is with knowledge. Creating a more equitable and just society must be the shared mission of our entire community. This means that each and every one of us must deliberately choose to actively work towards that mission, to dismantle structures of racism, both blatant and banal, with education, advocacy, and most importantly, with empathy. Inclusion is a choice. So is exclusion. When we choose our leaders, our public policies, and even simply go about our day-to-day -day lives, we must actively choose inclusion every single time. Thank you so much for being here. Your presence matters. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you for the work that you're doing in the General Assembly. Uh, along with the TEACH Act, Jennifer and the Asian American Caucus are also working on the hate crimes legislation that would expand hate crime protections based on immigration status and citizenship status. So please do support these bills. Um, you can learn more and find witness slips at our Asian American Caucus website. We're 